B-24 makes an emergency landing at a tiny island off the Yugoslavian coast. The island's airstrip has served as a haven for both bombers and fighters, either damaged, out of fuel, or for other reasons, unable to survive the long overwater flight to their Italian bases. Now that the Balkans are being liberated, the operations of this air service repair squadron can be revealed. A crane pulls the B-24 out of the mud for a tire change. During mission days, planes drop in over the peaceful countryside after having eluded heavy flak in raids on enemy territory. The grounded planes are given rapid service, ranging from minor repairs to a complete overhaul, including everything from patching up flak damage to a change of engines. Yugoslav mechanics work alongside our repair crews. While the repairs are underway, the Americans tour the nearby villages and waterfront. They chat with Yugoslav patriots who helped liberate the island, including women who wear the cap of the partisan fighters. During bad weather, Yugoslavian ships bring in food and supplies for the Yank Islanders. During good weather, most of the cargoes are flown in on regular schedule by C-47s, which load up in Italy. On the return trip, the cargo planes often take along crews whose planes are damaged beyond repair. Most of the aircraft, however, are soon made fit to fly. The crews say goodbye to their American and Yugoslav mechanics and return to Italy for further missions. This base, in the midst of German-held territory, was captured by the partisans and turned over to the Allies to save flak riddled bombers returning from Balkan missions. Planes which, together with their crews, would otherwise have been lost. A segmented type oxygen tank developed by Army Air Forces for use in aircraft proved shatterproof when punctured by anti-aircraft fire. Old type oxygen tanks with a shell made all in one piece shatter upon being hit by a burst of 50 caliber machine gun fire. Parts from a shattered tank. Firing at a new type segmented tank. Oxygen escapes through bullet holes, but there is no explosion. The compartmentation prevents shattering because it confines stresses to the segment punctured by the bullet. A model of the new U.S. buzz bomb is displayed by engineers at the Army Air Force's Air Technical Services Command, Wright Field. In its actual size, this adaptation of the German V-1 has been subjected to exhaustive wind tunnel tests as shown in these Air Force's films. Now the American buzz bomb is flight tested. The carriage, which acted as a catapult, drops away, and the robot flies toward the target on its own power. and Chinese engineers speed completion of the Michinaw Dung Yue route connecting the Lido Burma roads. These pictures were taken shortly before the opening of the route, 20th January, when a convoy from India composed of American lend lease cargo launched the first overland supply run to China in almost three years. stretches of some of the worst terrain in the world. 
So closely tied were Allied military and road operations at this time that it was undetermined if the convoy waiting in Michinaw would make the run on the cutoff via Dong Yue or on the main road via Wanding, where the last Jap roadblock was being annihilated. The Michinaw Dong Yue link covers 90 miles across an 8,000 foot mountain range. Among Burma's natural dangers, a nine foot python. Six foot culverts are being built on the Lido Highway by Chinese engineers. Building a bridge to span one of the many rivers in the path of the Lido Road. Lumber is from a sawmill operated by the aviation engineers. The mill turns out about 18,000 feet of lumber a day of which more than 95% goes into bridge construction. Ready for China-bound traffic, more than two years after the Lido Road's initial blueprints set the stage for the reconquest of Burma. Renamed the Stillwell Road in honor of General Joseph W. Stillwell, the Lido-Burma Highway is expected to supplement oil pipeline and air transport. Demonstrating concealment features of new snow capes issued on the 9th Army front. Members of the 8th Infantry Division patrol the Hurtgen Forest in tests of the camouflage dress. An outdoor shop is maintained by this staff sergeant for emergency tailoring of snowsuits. 52 years old and a veteran of three wars, the sergeant employs a GI knife and a captured German sewing machine in fashioning the garments. For many of our troops, this most bitter winter on the Western Front marks their introduction to warfare in the snow. Initial skirmishes amid deep drifts have driven home the importance of proper camouflage, a need reflected in the sergeant's unique assignment. He opened his makeshift shop when an infantry division planning an attack on strong pillbox defenses east of Lammersdorf called for an immediate supply of 35 camouflage suits. The material used is from old mattress covers. A 20 millimeter Italian dual purpose gun is ready to be moved into firing position at Gürtenisch, Germany in the Duren sector. The Nazis secured this weapon from the Italians and we in turn captured it. Employing the captured 20 millimeter gun on 2nd January, enemy targets a half mile away are brought under indirect fire. Belgium, the engineers improvised bazooka shells as roadblocks, employing the shell cases for firing tubes. After the ends are cut open, the cardboard containers are fastened on a fence facing the objective. The shell is returned to its case, which has now become the bazooka weapon employed by Company B, 238th Engineer Battalion. After wiring, the projectile is set off by a pair of flashlight batteries. For the first time, a weasel is used as a wire truck. At Sourbrook, Belgium, 5th January, a signal company of the 99th Infantry Division lays a communication line in the 1st Army sector. They report that the weasel's performance over the difficult snow-covered terrain makes it most advantageous for cross-country wire construction. Officially designated as the M29C light cargo carrier, this vehicle has proved itself equally at home, not only in deep snow, but also in swamps, marshes, mud, sand dunes, and waterways.
A recently arrived M24 tank with the 9th Army at Han, Germany. Embodying many improvements over its forerunner, the M5, shown on the right, the M24, however, poses problems of identification. Frontline reports indicate difficulty in recognizing this new American vehicle because of its similarity to the German tank. Our M24 employs the torsion bar suspension system. Its all steel tracks are 16 inches wide, more than four inches wider than the M5s. A 75 millimeter gun with concentric recoil mechanism as compared with the M5's 37. Also comparing the shell used by each weapon. It's possible to distinguish the M24 with its low silhouette from similar German models by remembering certain construction features, such as the torsion bar suspension with five bogey wheels. Also, the 75 millimeter gun has no muzzle brake. In a side silhouette, the turret overhangs to the rear. Head on, the machine gun mount is at upper left, the greenhouse at upper right. As a recognition feature, the machine gun mount on top stands out clearly in all views. New versions of the Sherman tank appear at the front with modified suspension systems and wider tracks. These wide tracks should give improved traction in the snow and mud of western front battlefields. The 76 millimeter gun has a muzzle brake, very similar to the German version. In tests near Bastogne before delivery to the 4th Armored Division, the modified Sherman is photographed to show distinguishing features and the vehicle's maneuverability. December, a single plane attempts a bombing and strafing attack. Objective, the Labuan oil refineries and storage tanks near Miri, Borneo. The Raider is a B-24 of the 13th Air Force Snooper Squadron. Bombs are dropped from treetop level on the refinery. Then nearby storage tanks are strafed. The waste guns use 50 caliber incendiaries to start fires. On the 10th of December, another lone B-24 repeats the attack. The low-level approach enables it to make a surprise appearance and then get away without interception. Air Corps films made hours later reveal the effects of this new snooper tactic. Eight large tanks are left ablaze by the first single plane. Bomb hits on the raid by the second plane are estimated at 75%. 